Hey guys, in this video, I wanna save you some money. If you're looking to buy Sony's Bluetooth remote for its cameras like the Sony a7C, a7III, and a7S III, perhaps you can save a little bit of money. I'm talking about the Sony remote, the RMT P1BT. The one I have right now is a third party and it's by JJC. The main things I wanna cover is why would you actually wanna go out and buy a Bluetooth remote for your Sony camera? And is the third party version worth it? it, does, it does it actually work? Is it reliable? Obviously there's risk buying third party stuff that it may not work, it might break easily, but I just wanna say that this was a really good investment. Let me explain why you may want a Bluetooth remote. So my number one use case for having this remote is for cell filming. Obviously I'm filming by myself. I don't have anyone to shoot behind the camera to, to turn on the button. But then you might be wondering, okay, well, if the camera is so close to you, can't you just reach over and press the record button? Well, yes, you can. But if you want to get a nicer shot and not have that crazy wide angle view like I'm doing right now, we want to move the camera really far and shoot at a longer focus length like right now. And as you can see, I'm much further away from the camera. So being able to reach over is literally impossible. And obviously I'm going to get a more cool portrait type of look, more compression so my face doesn't look so distorted and hopefully I'll look a little bit better. So this is probably one of the main reasons why you probably want to invest if you're self-filming and you're shooting pretty far away from the camera. Now, alternatively, of course, you can press the record button and just run into the shot. So let's say, for example, here. Okay. So yeah, I just ran back to my position and I was able to start filming. So maybe that isn't a big nuisance. Maybe you can just get away with doing that, having to record, hit the record button once and run into your position. But for me, I don't want to have to Cut the I don't want to be running the clips if I'm just kind of reviewing my notes. You know, it's just continually running. It's going to eat up a lot of memory because I'm shooting at 4K. So I like to, you know, be able to cut it. Now, one of the cool things about this remote is when you're filming, it actually shows an indicator. There's a little red indicator that shows that you're actually shooting. And this is very helpful to make sure that if you, for example, mess up and you didn't hit the record button, you know that you're not recording. So this is a very handy little feature. That's a little bonus added to this remote. Now, of course, other reasons why you may want to invest in this remote, maybe for photography is, let's say you're doing long shutter and you don't wanna to touch the body of the camera when you initiate the picture. You can obviously initiate this remotely. One of the weird things about Sony, especially me coming from the Panasonic world, was that it doesn't include a free Bluetooth app, an app where you can control the shutter remotely. This is really strange. I, I, I think it's such a simple, basic app feature that Sony could implement, but they don't offer this. I think they force you to go out and buy their really expensive Bluetooth wireless remote. Now, yes, some previous cameras like the Sony a7 III actually use an infrared remote as an alternative way, and they, it supports both Bluetooth and infrared. The Sony a7C does not support infrared. So you're pretty much limited to using a Bluetooth remote. Or you may add, well, why don't you just use the, the, the app from Sony, the imaging app so that you can have a remote. Well, the thing with that app is that if you do use it on your smartphone, for example, first is it's gonna add an extra step. I really hate having to do an extra step if I wanna film a video. You want that workflow efficient. You just wanna be able to hit the record button and start recording right away. You don't have to do all this crazy setup. And the worst thing about using that app is it disables one of the main features on the Sony a7C and that's eye autofocus. And with that, if it disables that, it's also gonna disable multimetering for the face. So you're not gonna be able to judge exposure for your face. And this is one of the main reasons why we went out and purchased the Sony a7C over the a7 III is to have that eye autofocus in video mode. And it's completely disabled if you're using the remote app. Okay, so let's talk about the various controls. They're very similar to the Sony official remote. You're gonna have your autofocus on and your C1 button. This is a custom button and this maps to the exactly the, the same C1 button that is on your camera body. So in my case, the C1 button actually locks the exposure. So I'm gonna press it right now. So it locks the exposure right there, which is a really nifty feature. And especially if you really do care about the C1 custom button, you have it on the remote now. So maybe you're really far away from the camera and you wanna just snap the exposure right there. Very handy feature. Another really cool thing you can do is you can use the zoom that's built in. Now I'm using a zoom lens. It's not gonna be able to mechanically move, but Sony does support a feature called clear zoom, which kind of actually doesn't reduce the image quality. It just uses the, the crop because it crops in a bit. So let's, let's, let's do it right here. So you can see I'm really zoomed in, totally unnecessary. It's only on my face, but yeah, you have that feature right there. So I can just put it down. So very cool features. Now, if you look to the side of the, of the actual remote, you have movies in still mode. Now, strangely enough, I have to put it on still mode because if I have it on movie mode 
it's always going to hit the, the record button, the red button on my Sony a7C. And with the Sony a7C, you don't have a lot of custom functions. So I actually map the record button to a custom button. I think it locks the white balance, for example. And I use the shutter button, the full shutter button to actually start recording. So strangely enough with this remote, and I think this is, just, this, this is normal behavior, is that if you're in movie mode, it's going to map to the red button. And I don't want that. It's not going to start recording. It's going to lock the white balance because I pre-programmed the record button as, as such. So I move it to still mode. And, the, and there's a little caveat. There's a little, little bit of quirks used in this. And like I said, I don't think it's an issue with this. It's just how it interacts with the camera is that this main button, which is the shutter button, has a half press and a full press, like a typical shutter. And what's weird about it is that if you press it really quick, it doesn't actually register a full shutter click. So you have to be a little bit slow. You have to kind of hold it halfway and then and then go f the full way in terms of the shutter release. So it's a little bit weird, but you do get used to it. And it, I mean, you just can't click it right away. You just have to be a little bit more gentle and it works. If you're recording in movie mode, it totally works fine. There's no issues at all. It works very reliably. And last but not least, there are two more switches. This is the zoom and focus. Right now, I obviously, I obviously have it set to the zoom, which is probably more important for me in, in cases like this. And there's a lock button. This prevents you from kind of accidentally pressing the record button and maybe stopping filming for it by accident. So I don't really use that really much. So I've been using this remote for quite some time and I have to say it's rather reliable. I've only had it fail on me once, but it was just a little finicky. I was pressing the button, it wasn't registering for some reason. I'm not sure why that, that has happened. Some people on Amazon have reported this issue, but this issue has happened so rarely, so I haven't called it a flaw yet. So if this remote stops working for whatever reason, I will definitely update in the comments down below. Another thing you might be wondering is when I turn on the camera, does it automatically connect to the remote? And I'm very happy to report that it does. So it's very reliable. This definitely improves my workflow, especially in contrast with the remote smartphone feature. I find that having the Bluetooth remote is just a lot easier to set up a remote shutter. Another nice bonus is that this is super lightweight. It weighs only 18 grams, which is lighter than the 35 grams of the official remote. It takes your standard CR2032 battery, which is really cheap to buy on Amazon. And the Bluetooth pairing process to my camera was extremely easy. Just simply enable Bluetooth remote control in the Sony system menu, long press the shutter and T button on the remote for a few seconds. It'll blink red, and then it'll just automatically pair. Super simple. The final thing I wanna conclude with the JJC RMT P1BT is there is, seems to be a lot of really poor reviews on Amazon. When I was about to purchase this on Amazon, I was very shocked at how, how low the rating was. And you know what, I really, I really was desperate. I didn't want to pay full price, which in my country, in Canada, it cost 100 bucks. This cost like only 42 bucks, so it's less than half the price of the official remote. I took that gamble, I took the risk, and this is why I created this video. I wanted to share with you guys that this is actually working pretty well for me, and I'm very happy with the results so far. And while we're on the topic of third-party accessories, I really wanted to mention this battery for the Sony a7C. Now, the official Sony a7C batteries are extremely expensive, and then the actual body does not include a charger, such as this right here. So this is very handy if you don't want to constantly have to be plugging in your USB-C port with the battery inside your camera body. So having this is a very nice bonus and this is obviously, this is obviously really cheap. <laughs> if you were to buy this official charger and this battery, it would cost so much. The main issue with Sony camera bodies is they try to put a proprietary chip into the actual battery to prevent it from working obviously with third-party accessories. Thankfully, this company here, BM Premium, has decoded the chip so it actually works and so I'm able to use this on my Sony a7C without any issues so far. Like I said, I'll update this video with any issues if, I, if they do arise. And I will be giving links to these specific products in the description down below. If you want to support this channel, please use the affiliate links. It adds no extra cost to you, but does support this channel if you choose to purchase any of these products. So if you're interested in ways to save money when filming, definitely subscribe to this channel as I'll review more budget-conscious-friendly type of camera gear. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.